This is Elba. An American wheat ale spiced with lemongrass, grains of paradise, and a bitter orange peel. And of course, it's served with a slice of cucumber. Can I get uh, the Elba, please? Elba is brewed at Black Star Co-op in Austin, Texas. In keeping with the cooperative model, Black Star's brewmaster Jeff Young crowdsourced the creation of Elba by enlisting the input of the co-op's member owners and coming up with the recipe. A lot of love went into this beer, and it shows. I'm Mike Langford, and this is Locapore. I'm really excited to be here at Black Star. I'm also joined by Jeff Young, the head brewmaster here at Black Star Co-op. So thank you very much for having us. Absolutely, Jeff. I appreciate my pleasure. It. So we're trying Elba, yes. which I have to say, this is the first time I've ever had a beer come out with a cucumber in it. So you gotta tell me what's behind the cucumber. Part of our cooperative model here is to incorporate our member owners in any way that we can. And what, a really cool way to do that is to get them involved in the design of a beer. Okay. So I came to my member owners and said, hey, I don't have a wheat beer, summer months, it's hot, let's create something that is uniquely ours but works kind of in these general parameters of a wheat beer. We sat down with a couple handful of member owners. Back then I was really into Hendrix, uh, which is Scottish gin. I think it has some sort of infusion with cucumbers. So I was trying to push people, you know, a little towards like a wheat beer that had some semblance to gin and tonics. People just weren't really having it. <laughs> so I got overruled and we came up with something that I thought was beautiful. This great combination of lemongrass, grains of paradise, and bitter orange peel. Okay. But nonetheless, I had the last laugh because I still wanted to have some sort of cucumber addition to it. So I decided just to soak some cucumbers in some nice chilled water and put them on the side. And what it does is not only does it kind of distinguish itself, people see that uh, when they're sitting around the bar, but it also is just a beautiful combining element of all those flavors that we just added, the lemongrass and the grains of paradise. It brings it together. And we were just supposed to make that beer one time yep. to see how it worked that summer. I've been brewing it ever since. People and how many years ago it. is this now? Was two this? years ago. Two, years two, ago. two okay. and a half yeah. years ago. And it just took off. People loved it. And I think one of the cool things about it is how people consume the cucumber. There's yeah. multiple ways. Like some people will pop yeah. it in there, let it float around on top for a little while, soak it, maybe chew on it a little bit. Some people <laughs> wait to the very end. And well, it's kind of like how people do a cherry when it's in their soda or something like that. So they yeah. get it out right away and just let it down there. And that's like a bonus when you get to the bottom. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the co-op model and how that came about for Blackstar. Yeah, so it's a business structure. The idea is that a larger group of people equally own some sort of endeavor, some sort of business, and democratically run it. But this is the first time it's been applied to a brew pub. This is the first time in Austin or just anywhere? That we've no. ever been able to find. And there's, okay. you know, there's, there's cooperatives out there for some bars. Yeah. Uh, there's cooperatives out there for breweries. So we're, you know, we're not trying to be like super unique or anything, but it was the first time that we, we took kind of that retail side and the production side, put those together and had that controlled and, and owned and, and run by a cooperative. All right. It's not like an exclusive club. Yeah. Right. You don't have to be part of the co-op to come here and eat and drink. Uh, but if you are part of the co-op, it's generally more than just a place that you eat or drink. You meet people there, you talk about business. It's a community space in a sense, and it's just really nice to be owned and, and operated by the community, by the people that actually give a crap about the place. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I think, I told you, you might have had a sign. So there goes a the cucumber. There it goes. There goes the cucumber. I'm a two-thirds right. cucumber kind of guy. It's a really easy thing to be a part of. Really, the only restriction is you have to be over 21. Legal drinking age yeah. to be an owner of a bar. $150 is, is equity. So it's not even, you're, you're not just paying right, right. The, the business $150. You are giving the business $150 to use yeah. as equity. And it's something that if, if you were to move away or if you ever wanted to cut ties with a co-op, yeah. you get that money back. It's an investment. It's not, it's not a payment. The monthly fee or yearly fee, if you want to consider it, that is just coming here and, and yeah. eating and drinking. And, you know, so there's a lot of benefits to come from that. One of the biggest ones is, is we, we like to talk about the ownership of yeah. it, the fact that that you do have a say in your company. You vote on bylaws, you vote on, like the establishment we're in now was voted on by our member owners, like this is the place that we want to be in. That ownership, being able to run for the board of directors, being able to vote on the board of directors, a, a say in, in really large decisions, 
is a really cool thing that, that most businesses do not have in this sense. But then of course there, there's also like discounts on Tuesdays. We have member owner pike nights. They get a discount anytime we do events. There's usually a, a, a discount. We try to make it worth our, our member owner's time. It's not like you're just giving things away for free. Right, it's like right. this, this symbiotic relationship between the consumers and the operations of it through the ownership. And the more they consume, the better we do. And the better we do, the more they get and the more they consume. And it, it just works out That's awesome. Great. Talk about a perfect place to do our first episodes of Locavore, right? I mean, the whole concept of the Locavore concept coming to beer, right? The fact that you should be consuming more local beer, right? Yeah, Keeping the money in your community, uh, you know, locally sourcing things as, as best you can, right? Uh, better on the environment. I just can't imagine the carbon footprint of shipping beer all the way across the country. Across the world. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, I mean, <laughs> diesel trucks plus, you know, just all that. I can't even fathom but also just the character you talked about. I mean, the fact that the members here voted on the creation of this beer, were instrumental in the creation of this beer, says a lot about the community in which it was created, right? Yeah. It just comes through yeah. there. And when you know that, you're like, I'm not going to experience this beer anywhere yeah. else in the world. Yeah. One of the most important things to me is, is this community being able to find their voice in some way. Like, I, I'm not interested in just making beers that you know, make sales. Of course, that, that's that's awesome. It we happens, we need yeah. to sell. Them. But what I'm more interested in is finding our voice as a community. You know, like the Pacific Northwest kind of has a certain flavor about it. The beers up there, they're they're darker beers. They're the hops that they use. They have an identity, and it's just because they're 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 this localized kind of place that's been figuring out what kind of beers work for them, and that's what they excel at. And that's what I want to do here. I don't want to mimic. Uh, other places, I, I want uh, maybe eventually other people to mimic us and say, oh, this is such an Austin beer. Well, you know, it's funny, they talk about, you know, in wine you talk a lot about it, like, you know, terroir, right? I mean, like, you know, the earth actually has a flavor that comes through in the grapes. Well, actually, there, there is a little bit of that in beer. First of all, the water tastes different everywhere you go. I mean, there's, there's some different elements sure. in there, of course, but the character of the people, right? The, the, the climate uh, that you're in, like, you're going to brew different beers because of the fact that we're in Austin. It's hotter and drier than... Yeah. Uh, some other places, and it should be materially different styles. Yeah, yeah and I like the fact that you said that the people are, are, are different because yeah. I can mimic water from, from Berlin. I can, I can take hops that are from Belgium or, or wherever, and I can try to make a beer like that and probably get pretty close using science and experimentation. Yeah. But the thing that you can't mimic is the people that are over there. You can't, you can't mimic the, the appreciation. So the one variable that keeps it true and keeps it local is definitely the people. What is your ideal type of situation in which you drink this beer for you? Because for me, I'm thinking, hot as hell out, I need a refreshing beer. This might be great by the pool type of drinking yeah. beer. The intention of it was to have a, a light, easy to drink beer. But what I never want to do is sacrifice flavor for lightness or drinkability. But this kind of beer is something that you can drink and, and basically forget about. Yeah. The focal point is, is not the beer. The focal point is the people and the experience. Yeah. But the beer should accent that. Okay. The beer should uh, be involved in, in some way. Okay. And, and this is one of those beers that just works really well out on a patio on, yeah. a, on a hot summer day. So now food pairings, because I always think like, I gotta eat eventually. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so um, for me, the thing that pops to mind, I'm thinking fish tacos, right? Well, you know, a little bit of spice on there. Perfect. Right? I'm thinking Perfect. something like that. Uh, how about yourself? What did you pair this type of beer with? This, uh, I was about to say, as you were saying that, I was gonna say tacos in yeah. general. As you would imagine, a light beer, something you're drinking a lot of, you're also talking about lighter foods and something you're eating a lot of. And I think fish tacos uh, would be perfect. Great. All right, so we're at the end. Uh, we want we to finish these bad end. boys up. A little clink of the glasses yes. at the end. Here.